Hey everyone, it's Jose, the Science Smasher here. I'm a science educator at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and on these social distancing days, I am thinking about ways I can bring science from my home to your home. Now, the other day, I was missing my family, but instead of going to see them, we met over the internet. We had a video call, I got to see their faces and hear their voices, and it made me very, very happy. One of the things we love to do in my family is dance like crazy people. I was like this. Dancing, dancing, dancing! I'm a dance machine. <laughs> One of my favorite things we did in our dance party is we danced the electric slide. And I really enjoyed that because even though we were really far apart in different houses on the other side of the city, we were all doing things together. It made me really, really happy to see and have fun with my family. And then I was like, the electric slide. Could I talk about electricity in an experiment that you get home that's not gonna like turn you into Frankenstein's monster or anything like that? And the answer is yes. We can use static electricity to make pop cans ring like a bell. We're gonna be doing our Franklin's Bell experiment today. But first, you know there are some things that you otter know. Otters, I love them. They're just so cute. Before we do our experiment, here's some things you otter know about electricity. Now, electricity is something that we are very familiar with. It's in our houses, it lights up our lights. It does all sorts of cool stuff. We've achieved things with electricity that our ancestors hundreds of years ago wouldn't e have even been able to dream of. My video game systems, my TV, so many things use electricity. But what actually is electricity? And that's a really good question. Everything in the world is made up of atoms. Don't trust atoms. They make up everything. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all atoms are made up of little parts. At the center of the atom is something called the nucleus, and there are things in there called protons and neutrons. And then there are other particles and atoms called electrons. The electrons sort of whiz around the nucleus in groups or clouds. We don't exactly know where electrons are, but we know when they move because that generates electricity. Now these things have a charge. Protons in the nucleus of the atom have a positive charge, and the electrons have a negative charge. If you get the electrons to move in a current, you produce an electrical current. You produce electricity. And that's what happens. When I turn on the light, I close the circuit, and the electrons in the wires and the materials in my light move, and that electricity is usable. There's also a relationship between electricity and magnetism. You know, some people say I have a magnetic personality, and that's because every time I leave the house, people like to throw things at me. Uh, oh, I'm so magnetic. <laughs> so the relationship between electricity and magnetism is uh, pretty obvious, and it seems a little strange at first. But when we talk about electricity, we talk about a positive charge or a negative charge. And when we talk about a magnet, we usually talk about a North Pole and a South Pole. And the reason we say North Pole and South Pole is because the Earth has a North Pole and a South Pole, and the Earth is a gigantic magnet. The Earth's magnetic field is how you're able to use a compass to find North. One of the first people to discover charge or electrical charge was Benjamin Franklin, that guy from the $100 bill. He flew a kite in a rainstorm is, you know, what we're told. That's really dangerous. That's definitely not a science experiment you should do at home. But he also was really interested in electrical charges and bad weather. One thing that he rigged up is he had a lightning rod on top of his house. It went down to one bell, and then he had another bell really close to it, and that went down to the ground. He was able to explore charges using these bells. When the weather was bad, these bells would ring. We're going to make our own little version of Franklin's bells today. Now, most things in the world are not magnetic, and that's because the way that the electrons in their atoms interact with each other cancel out the electrical fields that they would normally generate. But when we add electricity to something like metal, we can generate an electrical field where there wasn't something there before. And electrical fields can act like magnets. So that's what we're going to be doing in our experiment today. We're going to be using some materials to move the electrons around and generate a charge. Then we're going to apply that to some soda cans and make those soda cans act like little magnets and they'll ring like bells. It's going to be really cool. So here we go.
All right, now we are going to do our cool experiment with charge and electricity. We're going to make some Franklin's bells. We don't uh, want to, like, you don't have to smith anything for this. We don't need batteries or generators, just stuff that you have around the house. So this is what we're going to be using today. I've got two soda cans right here. I've got a pencil. I've got some string. I've got some plastic wrap. And I've got an ordinary kitchen towel. These are all the materials that we need. The first thing we want to do is we want to pull one of the tabs off the top of our soda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Cut out my two cans and my cans are empty. Make sure you enjoy all that delicious soda before you do this experiment. Make sure they're empty and clean. I also pulled one of the pop tabs off the top of my uh, can. And this is going to be the little thing that rings the bell. It can ring these Franklin's bells, these bells, these Franklin bells, bells. Anyway, the next thing I want to do is I want to take a length of thread right here. Uh, just ordinary thread is fine. And I'm going to give it a little snip. Doesn't have to be super long or super short. I'm going to tie one end of it around a pencil like so. And then I'm going to tie the other end around my tab. Just, I know it's hard to see, but just like this. Okay, now I'm going to roll it up like so until it dangles. And I'm going to put the tab in between the cans. I want to make sure that they're not touching, but that they're really close together. Should be able to let it swing freely in there. So you don't want it too far apart. Otherwise the bell won't ring. The experiment won't work. We are going to be making little magnets and working with electrical charge, but these charges aren't going to be very strong. That's one of the things that allows our experiment to be safe. But that also means that we have to keep our, our cans and our tab pretty close together. Now what we need to do is we need to apply an electric charge. Like I said, we're not going to use wires or batteries. We're going to generate electricity using some plastic wrap and a towel. So I'm just going to get out a little plastic wrap. Here I've got my plastic wrap right here. And I'm going to pull out about enough to cover a large plate. Ooh. Then I'm going to put the plastic wrap down. It's important that my plastic wrap doesn't touch my cans. I've got an ordinary kitchen towel right here. And I'm going to rub the plastic wrap. As I do it, as I rub it quickly, it's sort of like when you rub your feet on a carpet and then get a spark from the doorknob. I am moving electrons from the towel to the plastic wrap. I'm giving it a negative electrical charge. But electricity doesn't really like plastic. It really prefers metal. So when I bring the plastic wrap close to the metal, it transfers the charge. What's happening is, is when I apply the plastic wrap to one of my cans, it starts to act like a little magnet. That attracts the ringer in the middle, but as soon as they touch, some of the charge gets transferred to the ringer. It's like bringing the same sides of a magnet together, so it gets repelled. When it touches the other can, it drops off the charge, and it rings back and forth using this magnetism until the charges between the two cans are equal. That's what makes my Franklin's bell ring. See how it's stuck like a magnet? That's because there's still charge there. If you're having trouble with your bells ringing, try trimming the ends of the string uh, that you use to tie it to the pencil. Another thing you can do if it stops ringing after a while is simply touch both cans and then the ringer. That'll allow the charge actually to pass through your body and down into the ground. If the cans are charged, they won't ring. But if you touch them and get rid of the charge, you can do the experiment again. I can also use a balloon. I put the balloon on my towel, and I rub it like this. I turn it and rub it. I turn it and rub it. I turn it and rub it. Get it nice and charged. That negative charge. I should make the bells ring. <laughs> See how it acts like a little magnet? We're ringing the bells with electricity. It's electric. <laughs> and that is our Franklin's Bells experiment. The bells! The bells! 
If you enjoyed that experiment, you can snap a photo of you ringing your own Franklin's bells using electrical charges and share it using the hashtag DMNSScienceParty. You can also check out DMNS.org slash learn for other cool videos and activities you can do. Hang in there and stay tuned for more videos from Jose the Science Smasher.